Hello, Pokemon trainers. Happy Halloween. And welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Battle Stadium singles video here on iStarly TV. It is the spookiest day of the year if you celebrate. Otherwise, if you don't celebrate, then maybe your birthday is your spookiest day of the year. If you're old, over 24, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, you tell me. Anyways, welcome back everyone. I thought I would do a fun little video here for Halloween. Now I had a team ready to go, a new team that was featuring a couple of Pokemon that I wanted to show off that I had built. And then I decided last minute Today's Halloween. I'm recording this on Halloween and I wanted to do a spooky team. So I just did a team full of ghost Pokemon. I literally just threw this team together right before the video. So <laughs> I recognize this is not the most cohesive team. Um, it is using a bunch of Pokemon that I've used in the past. Actually, all of these I've used in the past. I'm going to quickly go through them, but of course, this is a mono ghost team. You know, I always make fun of people who run mono type teams on Battle Stadium singles, on the, the Battle Stadium singles ladder. And here I am, everyone. But it's it's a special day, right? I like Halloween a lot. I like the season. I like the holiday. So, you know, why not celebrate? So, uh, we have Fluttermane here. This is my bulky Fluttermane, max HP, max defense with booster energy. Then we have my bulky Goldango, max HP, max defense. You're noticing a trend here. And that trend is I don't know what I'm doing and I randomly grabbed the first six ghost Pokemon I found in my boxes. <laughs> um, then we have my support Dragapult that I had been running on a couple of previous teams, which is max speed with uh, a max special attack with Will-O-Wisp and Thunder Wave, as well as Hex and Draco Meteor. Um, the goal is to burn or paralyze something and then do a ton of damage to it until I die and then go into something else to basically sweep. Then we have Spectrier, which I ran a long time ago, basically when Spectrier was kind of new to the meta. Um, I, I put it on a team. I honestly forgot what item I used at that point. It might have been Life Orb, but this Pokemon's strong. Uh, the downside is it's slower than Fluttermane, so that makes it less good than Fluttermane, but it's not that much slower than Fluttermane, and it is, it, it is stronger from the special attacking side. So we have another good offensive Pokemon in Spectrier. Then we have my Mimikyu, which is a Swords Dance Mimikyu, pretty, pretty traditional with red card. Oh, wow. I'm actually just noticing, um... Okay, this is really funny. Now, unfortunately, you know, I'm actually not, um, I'm actually not, I don't have a, we'll go maybe this one. I, I don't have a team code for this team because all of my team codes are currently full and I planned on doing a team code for my the next um, team that I'm gonna feature. So unfortunately, I don't have a team code. Uh, hopefully you didn't see where where am I here? Oh wait Duh, oops. Sorry. I'm all over the place here um, Yeah, so I don't have a team code for this team sadly because I felt like this was just a little special video that I wanted to show off You know a mono ghost type team. So um, Yeah, sadly, I don't have a team code today If you really are interested if enough people are interested I can make a team code But like I said, this isn't supposed to be a particularly good team. This is just to celebrate Halloween um, And then I have annihilate here with which is kind of a lead annihilate It's max attack max speed with taunt and stealth rock and then drain punch and rage fist the goal is just to kind of you know taunt slower leads and then force them to attack me so rage fist gets boosted and then you know set up stealth rock for my other pokemon so i can lead with either dragapult or annihilate so my spooky team is here let's go to some games we're battling against easter on halloween Ooh, that's even more spooky okay that was cringe anyway uh they lead they have fortress which is pretty likely to be a lead here um, Fortress, I would say, is, is pretty bad against both of my potential leads. I actually kind of want to lead with Annihilate here. The, the problem with that is if they lead with Landorus, that could be rough because of Intimidate. Um, I still think I want to, though. Although, Dragapult's pretty, pretty, like, universal. It's pretty good against everything they have. So maybe I just lead Dragapult here. Um, which means if they lead Fortress, they are going to probably get up Stealth Rock. So that's something I should keep in mind. Um, Mimikyu is also decent against them, but once again, I am worried about the Landorus. And also Urshifu has uh, Surging Strikes, which hits three times, so that would break my my Disguise and probably kill me right after. So Spectrier, Spectrier is decent. The big problem is their Flutter main, though. Um, aside from that, Spectrier does outspeed everything else, but I'm not certain that it could do 
all that much damage, but I kind of want to feature it. I've been wanting to do another team with Spectre because I really like it. And then we'll bring Goldango because they do have a lot of physical attackers. I think one Pokemon I'm worried about is that Ursaluna though. So uh, what do I what do I have against Ursaluna? Honestly, I don't have that many things, but once again, our goal is just to kind of just do random stuff here. Just play, play some spooky ghost type Pokemon. I'm not sure how many battles I'll do. Maybe two, maybe three. Um, and I tried to choose some spooky music. There's not like a lot of spooky music in the games. Oh, and I, I forgot I was doing a Mimikyu uh, raid or what, not, not raid, um, outbreak. And I took a picture. So that that's also pretty fitting. So we're really going all in on the holiday here. They lead with Fluttermane, which I'm actually okay with because I can actually hex this. And, and I did not see booster energy, so I, I I don't think they're gonna taunt me. Maybe they will taunt me. If they do, that's actually great because I'm faster than them. So paralyzing this early is pretty good for us. Let's see what they go for now. They could just go for the Moonblast right off the bat. Um, that is gonna take us down to our Sash. We luckily do not get the special attack drop, which is nice. Um, I'm just gonna go for Hex here. Even if we get knocked out, their Fluttermane is paralyzed. So whatever we go into is going to have a great opportunity to knock out Fluttermane, but they just stay in, so that's great for us because, of course, Dragapult is faster than everything on their team, unless they're running a Choice Scarf on that Chiyu or possibly Urshifu, um, or even Landorus, but aside from that, like, we are almost guaranteed to get a hit on whatever they go into, though they do go into Ursaluna, which is probably going to have the Vacuum Wave, which, with their ability, is going to hit us, yeah, so even though we're a Ghost type, their ability makes it so that fighting and normal moves can hit Ghost types, so... Um, that is going to knock us out there. And <laughs> it's funny because, you know, we're a mono ghost team, but we're not immune to Ursaluna's attacks. So I kind of wonder what I should go into here. And I think that's just going to have to be Spectrier, which is really rough. Um, now the question is, what do I go for? <sighs> All right. You know, we might lose this game, but again, the goal is to have some fun with this team. I'm going to Terrasilize Go Terra Blast. There's a chance we can knock them out. However, if they Terra into like Fairy type, which is something that I've seen, this could be really bad for us. Basically, if we lose Spectrier here, I think we lose the game. Like if we lose Spectrier and they have Ursaluna still alive, I think we lose the game. But luckily for us, they actually don't Terrastalize. So depending on what their set is, this possibly knocks them out. Nope, it does not. Not, not even close. <laughs> okay, so if we can somehow survive, no, we're not, there's no way we're surviving this. I was gonna say, if we can somehow survive this, um, we can still win this game, but that's not happening. And now, unfortunately, because they are a, a normal and ground type, they are immune to Thunder Wave and Hex. So all we can do here is just make it rain. I should be faster and this might knock them out, but then we have Goldango against whoever their Pokemon is. And looking at remembering their team, Almost every, this is super effective, uh, almost everything they have is gonna beat Goldango. <laughs> like, Landorus is just gonna destroy us because we cannot Terrastalize anymore. Um, Chiyu will destroy us. Urshifu, honestly, if they have Urshifu, it's possible we still win this. But if they have Landorus or Chiyu, it's GG, bro. On Halloween, they have Landorus, okay. GG, we tried. <laughs> All they have to do is click Earthquake like until until I'm dead because no nothing we do here is going to save us. I'm just going to recover. If they're Terra Ground, we're absolutely dead. Um, otherwise, I don't know why they would Terrastalize here. Terra Water. Oh, I think they expected me to go make it rain, which I'm not going to do for the rest of the battle. Actually, well, they're going to go Earthquake and we pr we might not live even if we do though, because I was going to say actually, okay, yeah, we don't we don't even live. I was going to say, actually, we could we can now paralyze them with Thunder Wave, but it just doesn't matter. I mean, maybe if we had survived that, which if they're max attack, I don't think we would anyway, then we can paralyze them and then we would have to get lucky at that point and have them get fully paralyzed and then we could recover. So there was a world where we possibly won that game, but probably not. If they're like max attack, then I don't I don't think that it really matters. But anyways, uh, that's game one with our terrible mono ghost team. Let's go to game two. All right, something else I'm doing is I'm trying to choose some spooky music in-game because I'm using the in-game music. So I'm trying to choose tracks that are kind of spooky. I don't know if... I don't think they're that spooky, but, <laughs> you know, it's the best we got here. Anyway, their team is cool. They have Palafin, which you don't typically see. 
The question here, of course, is which do we lead with? I'm actually tempted to lead with Annihilate. The problem with that is if they lead with Garchomp or Thunderous, that could be a little rough. I think I'm still gonna do it though. And then Mimikyu is okay. And then maybe Goldango, because they have a lot of physical attackers. The thing is, if we bring Goldango, we probably have to Terrastalize it because, well, not necessarily. But then Gudra's an issue. What about Spectre? Spectre is faster than everything they have, but if they're Choice Scarf Palafin, that could be an issue. Dragon Bolt's also decent here. Hmm. These are all decent. I'm gonna go Gold Dango though. Ah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I made the right call here. We're already off to a rough start here. My Mono Ghost team that I threw together literally five minutes before the video is not doing great. <laughs> Let's see what their picture is like. Oh, that's a cool one. I like Clodzire. Clods oh, well, Clodzire's design is cute, but Clodzire as a Pokemon in competitive battling is awful. Now they lead Skeledurge against a mono ghost type team. Go figure, right? Um, I think I just start with a taunt because I don't want them to burn me. And then they're probably going to go Shadow Ball. Like they're probably going to predict this. It is what it is though. Yeah, okay, that works out really well for me then. Um, honestly, I think Skeledurge was the main Pokemon I was looking at for Stealth Rock. I mean, there are a few others, but I'm just gonna click Rage Fist here. If they Terra, that's fine, right? Because we'll survive a hit, and if they go like Terra Normal, then we have Drain Punch for super effective damage the next turn, and if they Terra into anything other than Normal, Rage Fist will still do decent damage, so I'm fine just doing this. That's why I think Skeledurge was a weird lead on their part. So now it cannot slack off for what it's worth. If they don't Terrasilize and they stay in, they're taking a ton of damage for no reason. And then even if they Shadow Ball me, I'm pretty sure I survive. Okay, they switch, which means we get damage on whatever comes in. And now we know about the Skeledurge in the back, so that's pretty helpful. They go into Urshifu, which I'm just fine with because... Like, we just d damage it. Now I think I'm just gonna go into Goldango. They might Swords Dance here, which is pretty rough. If they Swords Dance, that's pretty tough. Actually, maybe I should have stayed in, but I don't know. Like, if they were gonna Swords Dance, they were gonna do it anyway. So I'm just gonna go ahead and switch here. Because Goldango, the reason I switched mainly is because Goldango is max HP, max defense. And if they just Surging Strike here, yeah, they might just Surging Strike we might be able to get a lot of damage with our Rocky Helmet and decent and survive it decently well. They are Terra Water, which is going to boost the power. If they're Punching Glove, this is going to do a lot of damage and they're not going to get Rocky Helmet damage. So that's going to be... That would be a worst case scenario. Yeah, honestly, that would be a really rough scenario. Okay, they are not Punching Glove, so this, that helps a lot, honestly. They might knock us out here, but... Like we lose Goldango, but it's likely they're gonna leave they're gonna lose Urshifu in the process. So this works out decently, I would say. I'm gonna click recover by the off chance that we're somehow faster than them or some some weird thing happens. Wow, and they do switch. Wow, that is just crazy. And they go into Gudra. Okay. I mean now I know their whole team, so we can kind of try to play around what they have. And they've terastalized, so we're in a pretty decent position. I'm definitely just going to click Thunder Wave here. I should be faster. I have no speed investment, but I know Goldango is naturally faster than Gudra. Okay, they're thinking. We do get off the Thunder Wave. That's great. That's great. Even though Gudra is slow, like the ability to possibly have them miss their moves is pretty good for us. Oh wow, yeah, we get that right away. That's that's pretty unfortunate, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> We're gonna Hex now just to get off damage. And honestly, they have no switch-ins to Hex. Yeah, so they, they stay in, they take decent damage. Ooh, that's rough. Kind of wonder if they'll just concede at this point. That's rough, to be honest. Uh, I'm gonna Hex again, I just wanna get off damage. Like, they might Flamethrower, which could be rough, but even if we lose Gold Dango, we're getting off valuable damage on the Gudra, and yeah, they do Flamethrower, they do knock us out. Um, but I think I might just go into Annihilate. 
and then Terrastalize. Because Mimic used Terra Ghost. Terrastalize and then Drain Punch. Or do we not Terrastalize? They're not going to have a super effective move. I guess I just Drain Punch here. Like, Terrastalizing um, could be good in the face of... So this is awkward. I guess they predicted this, but yeah. Terrastalizing could be good in the face of um, Urshifu, although I might just do it now. Cause I was gonna say we can like catch Urshifu off guard by, um... wow. Okay, that's kind of funny. We can catch Urshifu off guard if, they're, if we plan, or if we expect them to hit us with Surging Strike and then we just, um... oh, this is actually kind of rough. Is there any world where we lose here? Because now they're going to be faster than us. I mean, for what it's worth, they can't Swords Dance, but however, they can Close Combat, but Close Combat's not going to do extra damage to us because... Um, because they're, they're Terra Water, they're not like Terra Fighting, so... Let's go ahead and Rage Fist here. I think the damage boost is saved, so like... Well, we haven't taken any damage this game, never mind. Oh, they might survive this. I know Urshifu has decent bulk. They have no switch-ins to Rage Fist, though. Not at all. So that's good for us. Wow, are you serious? This is great. Because if it comes down to, like, Mimikyu as the last Pokemon, we can just potentially pick off their their uh, Urshifu with... Um... Wow, that doesn't do that much damage. We can potentially pick off their Urshifu with Shadow Sneak. However, the fact that this took the hit so well is pretty pretty tough for us. I'm going to go ahead and taunt, though. I think we want to get up Stealth Rock at some point. I'm going to taunt, even though they possibly switch into Urshifu, just because, like, we don't lose anything if that happens. Like, we're not losing any value if, if they just switch into Urshifu. So, um, yeah, taunting here is great. They might expect us to predict, and they might have gone Will-O-Wisp. Perfect, perfect, okay. Now I'm actually just going to use this opportunity to Stealth Rock. Because it'll help us kill the um, the Urshifu. And if they switch out right now, like, yeah, Urshifu will not take Stealth Rock damage, but Skeledurge will when it comes back in. So we're just kind of thinking ahead here. Um, I mean, Annihilate kind of has a lock on their team. If we're able to knock out Urshifu, because Urshifu is the Pokemon I'm most afraid of. The thing is, if they happen to not be max speed with Urshifu, I actually might be faster than them, because Annihilate has decent speed. I think it's base 90, I want to say. Um, and I am max speed with a Jolly Nature, and Urshifu has base like 97, I think. So yeah, they are faster. If they have max speed, they are faster. But if they don't, then we could be faster. So they go Shadow Ball, which is going to increase the power of our Rage Fist, finally. Um, oof, they get this special defense drop. However, I think with Skeledurge, with Unaware, I actually think they ignore that. So they it, they actually attack us, they damage us as though, as though we didn't get the special defense drop, if that makes sense. Wow, okay, this is nice. So this should do the same damage if Unaware works away. I think it does. Yes, perfect. Um, and or getting that special defense drop isn't that big of a deal because... Um, because Urshifu's not a special attacker. So now we go Rage Fist. They have no switch-ins. If they switch in Urshifu, it's dead. If they switch in Gudra, it's probably dead. And if they stay in Skeletor, just dead. So no matter what happens here, they're losing a Pokemon. So that puts us in a really good position. The thing is, if they stay in here and just die to the Rage Fist, then they go into Urshifu. Again, if I happen to be faster than Urshifu, then it's probably GG. Um, but if I'm not faster than, than Urshifu, they knock me out with close combat. Um, huh. They knock me out with, with close combat. And then I go into Mimic You, and they have minus one defense, so I pick them off with Shadow Sneak. And then it's Mimic You versus Gudra, so I kind of like those odds. Uh, we're going to click Rage Fist, and if by some chance we're faster, then it's GG. I feel like we might be faster, because they've been playing it really safe with this Urshifu. Like, they were scared of our Annihilate with Urshifu, so they must be faster, right? Like, like... 
I, the way they're playing right now and the fact that they're not really doing anything quickly, like, I feel like we are probably faster than them. They know we're not Choice Scarf. Okay, they are faster. I don't know why they were taking so long to think. <laughs> okay, so they are faster as we expected. Yeah, even though we resist this, obviously we took so much damage from the Skeleturge that we just cannot survive a uh, Surging Strikes. And then we go into Mimikyu and a Shadow Sneak will knock them out. Worst case scenario, they also have Aqua Jet. So if they're like Choice Banded, then we're in a really good spot here. Um, I guess something that could happen is they switch into Gudra right now. But I'm not gonna not click Shadow Sneak. And either, if they if they Aqua Jet, they'll break my disguise. Okay, okay, yeah, this is perfect. So that's gone. So it's now Mimic You versus Gudra. The question is, and I think I think I just shot yeah, I think I win the game just by clicking Shadow Claw. Because I don't think Gudra has any any recovery, right? Like it doesn't have recover or anything. Um, that is a lot of HP, or that is, yeah, that is a lot of remaining HP. Play Rough will do more damage, but it could miss. That's the thing. If I Swords Dance, they go Heavy Slam, break my disguise, and then next turn, if I don't kill them with a move, then they can Heavy Slam and win the game. Oh. I'm gonna Play Rough just because it does more damage. All we need to do is, is land two moves. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, because that's the thing with Gudra. Like, if they were max HP, max defense, which is not like a weird move or a weird EV spread on Gudra, they could possibly survive. And obviously, if we had missed, that would have been awful. But yeah, we got a win there. Um, I mean, all these Pokemon are pretty good. So that's one thing that, like, yeah, I, I just randomly threw this team together at the last minute. But all of these Pokemon are really good. So, you know, that definitely helps just playing a bunch of good Pokemon. So that is my spooky team for Halloween. Um, this was really fun. You know, I, I lost the first battle and then won the second one. That was a longer one, so we'll just kind of end it there as far as the battles. Um, and yeah, so thank you very much for watching. I am also in the middle of a potential shiny hunt for Drifloon because right now in Scarlet and Violet, um, there's an event going on where you get, if you connect to the internet, you get different raids, like spawn, or not sponsored, but like promoted raids with certain ghost type Pokemon like Mimikyu, Drifloon. Uh, Phantom and Grievard, and they they are more likely to have the opportunist mark, um, or it's, I think it's called the crafty mark. And if you select it on your Pokemon, it calls them the opportunist. So this is part of my little Halloween video, I guess. You know, since I only did two battles, uh, I'm gonna. I, I don't know if I'll find a shiny, and I don't know if I'll keep recording until I do. Oops. I'm just gonna do the picnic method because I've already knocked out a few, and I already caught a few as well. As you can see, I have a bunch of Drifloons in my party, um, and then. Right here, I was able to find, I think I found two with the opportunist mark. I found one with a sociable mark. That's like the most common mark, so it's not that cool. Yeah, we have uh, this one, the opportunist. It doesn't say Drifloon the opportunist, but either way. And then I also found one that says the cloud watcher, which is really cool because, you know, Drifloon is a balloon Pokemon. So it's it's cool for it to have the cloud watcher title because, you know, kind of fits. Um, but yeah, I've always wanted a shiny Drifloon. I guess this is a little bit of story time here on our Halloween video, if you're still watching. Um, I've always wanted a shiny Drifloon, and in all the years of playing Pokemon, I don't think I've ever gotten one. Uh, you know, and I, I definitely tried. I remember when Diamond and Pearl were out, and I first learned about shiny hunting. I went to the Valley Windworks on Friday, because that's when Drifloon spawns in... Scarlet, or I'm sorry, in, in uh, Diamond and Pearl, that's the only way to get Drifloon is going to the Valley Windworks on Friday. And it's a static encounter. So it's, you know, you see it there on the field and you press A. It's kind of like, you know, like when you battle legendary Pokemon. And I soft reset the game over and over and over and over again until I got a, sh or until I would find a shiny, but I never did. <laughs> and I, I think I remember going at it for like t over two weeks. So two weeks, I was just, Pressing A on that Drifloon, I battled it. If it was not shiny, I would reset the game and just doing that over and over and over again. And after the two weeks of, of doing that over and over and over again and never getting a shiny, 
I gave up. <laughs> now, to be fair, that was the generation right before they introduced the shiny charm. So shiny charm did not exist in Diamond and Pearl, original Diamond and Pearl. So you were full odds all the way. I think the odds were a little different back then, but it was full odds because there was no shiny charm and there was no, no way to increase it. So you really just had to get lucky. And, you know, I've been shiny hunting for a long time in Pokemon. I think that was when, when I kind of started shiny hunting, even though, you know, that wasn't the best experience for me since I felt like I wasted a lot of time. But in sixth gen was when I really started to shiny hunt and I would do a lot of shiny breeding. And I, I think I have, uh, Pokemon X is the game where I have the most hours of any Pokemon game. Um, I know I have over a thousand hours because my clock is maxed out on that game where it says 999 hours and 99 minutes played, um, which, you know, it doesn't go beyond that. So I've definitely played for more than a thousand hours. And a lot of that time was spent shiny hunting. Um, I got like a shiny Lucario, shiny Roserade, shiny Greninja. A little, another little side uh, funny story about my shiny hunting there was... I was breeding a shiny Froki to get a shiny Greninja. And I, you know, Protean, its hidden ability is its best ability. It's really good. So I needed it to have the Protean ability. And I bred a bunch, like probably hundreds of Greninja eggs or Froki eggs. And I finally got a shiny, which was obviously super exciting. And I checked and it had the Torrent ability. So what did I do? I don't remember, if, if I'm being honest, I don't remember if I reset the game or if I just kept it in the box and then just kept going. But either way, what I did was I I just kept going. I, I, I did it again. <laughs> I bred hundreds more Froakies. And yes, eventually, it was the second shiny Froakie that I got that did have the Protean ability. So that was awesome. So that's one of my most prized shinies of all time because I put in a lot of work for that one. And... You know, Shiny Greninja is amazing looking. It's really, really cool. So I feel like I really, um, you know, got a, a nice little reward for that one. And, you know, I would I would breed a lot of Shinies during that time. Um, my record, I think, was five eggs. I was breeding a Shiny Ghastly for Dieter, my co-host on, on iStarly TV. Um, he's been, you know, he's been busy with life and work and everything. And we don't live near each other anymore, so... Sadly, we haven't, you know, collaborated in a while, but he was my long-standing co-host on iStarly. But one time I was breeding a shiny Ghastly for him, and I got it, like I said, I got it in five eggs. <laughs> so that was my record. That's my record for shiny hunting ever. And then my record on the other end was, aside from that Drifloon, I was breeding a shiny Growlithe in Pokemon X. And I went on, I, once again, I went on for several weeks for like, multiple weeks like probably two to four weeks i don't remember exactly how long i just kept hatching shiny or ha uh, hatching growlets must have hatched hundreds and hundreds of growlets and i never saw a shiny so sadly i did give up and then my next pokemon i was breeding just for competitive purposes was uh houndour because i wanted a mega houndoom and I got a shiny Hound houndour in like under five eggs so that was an awesome story because the funny thing is i mean Arcanine's a really good Pokemon competitively, and sadly Houndoom is not. However, I love Houndoom. It's like one of my favorite Pokemon. So one of my like top 20 favorite Pokemon. So like it's funny that I was looking for a shiny Growlithe. I didn't get one. I gave up. And then the, the next Pokemon I get is a shiny Houndoom, which is again one of my favorites. So with that being said, I could talk all day about shiny stuff, but sadly it looks like we're not finding a shiny Drifloon anytime soon. I made a sandwich at the beginning of this outbreak, um, which I realized I should have waited because the little method is you knock out a bunch of Pokemon in the outbreak. And then after a certain number that you've knocked out, I think it's like 50 or 60, the shiny chance increases the most. So I should have waited until I did that and then made a sandwich. And I have the ingredients to make another sandwich. I'm just honestly lazy. And if I don't end up finding a shiny Drifloon, it's not the end of the world. I would like one, but I, I love finding shiny Pokemon for uh, that, that I can use in competitive battling. And Drifloon's not like super good. It, it has its niche, but it's not like a Pokemon that's like particularly amazing in battle stadium singles. But if I do find a shiny, I'll probably try it out. Probably catch it in a quick ball because I think shiny Drifloon pairs really nicely with shiny quick ball because um, Drifloon is yellow and it has a, or shiny Drifloon is yellow with a blue X in the middle. 
And a quick ball is kind of the opposite. It's blue and it has like a yellow like X in the middle. So I thought that'd be really cool. So currently I haven't found it. I'm gonna keep going. If, if I do happen to find it, I'll, uh, you know, show it. But uh, if I don't, you know, uh, hopefully you enjoyed my little story time about shiny hunting. Uh, and hopefully that made the video worthwhile, but it was fun doing this, you know, happy Halloween everyone if you celebrate it. I love fall, like September through December is my favorite time of year ever. Like the weather's so much nicer, you know, it's fall, there's Halloween, there's Thanksgiving, there's Christmas. Um, I just love like every month starting from December, uh, September through December. So good time of year right now. I'm really happy and I hope you are all too. I hope you're all doing great. I hope you have a wonderful day. Also, please like and subscribe for more Pokemon Scarlet and Violet videos and let me know what you thought of this video because it, it's a little different than I typically do. You know, we had a theme team in the battles and then we also had a little bit of a story time after since I only did two battles. So thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please leave a like and subscribe. Let me know what you thought of this new format or, or this very different format. And I hope you find a shiny Pokemon very soon. You deserve it. See you next time.